don't airlines fly over to bed? Look at a flight aware map of airlines flying all over the world, and you'll notice something unusual. There are no planes flying over Tibet. The autonomous region of Tibet lies in the southwest part of China and borders India to the west, Nepal to the southwest, and Burma and Bhutan to the southeast. Tibet sits on the Tibetan Plateau, which is the world's largest and highest plateau. It covers around 965,000 square miles, which is five times the size of France. Most of the Tibetan Plateau lies at an elevation of between 13,000 and 5,000 feet. Known as the Roof of the World, Tibet is also bordered by the world's two highest mountain peaks, Mount Everest at 29,029 feet and K2 at 28,251 feet high. During World War II, flying over Tibet was called flying the hump. After the Burma Road was captured by the Japanese, Pilots had to fly cargo from India and Burma over Tibet and into China. A higher percentage of flight crews died flying over the hump than were killed during the daylight bombing raids over Germany. Flying over Tibet presents a problem for airliners for four reasons. First, there are only two airports in the region. Lhasa Gangar Airport in Lhasa, the capital of the Tibet Autonomous Region, and Tribhuvan Airport in Kathmandu, the capital of Nepal. If there is a medical emergency on board an aircraft, there are no alternative airfields on which to land. Landing at Lhasa can be a problem for some people because its elevation is 3,650 meters or 11,975 feet and it takes a while for breathing to adjust. The second reason flying over Tibet is a problem for aircraft is because of the amount of emergency oxygen airplanes carry. Those yellow oxygen masks that drop down in the case of an emergency cabin depressurization are connected to individual canisters of combustible chemicals stored above each seed. You are told to pull down your mask because that motion ignites the chemicals which produce the oxygen. Planes have only between 10 and 20 minutes of oxygen, which should be long enough for an aircraft to descend to below 10,000 feet where there is breathable air but most of Tibet lies above 10,000 feet. The third reason flying over Tibet presents a problem for airliners is because of engine out drift down procedures. These are the set of instructions pilots must follow if one of the plane's engines goes out. Modern planes are designed to fly with the loss of an engine, but the plane must drift down to a lower altitude. This altitude is determined by the gross weight of the airplane. Over Tibet, that safe altitude might be lower than that of the ground. The fourth problem facing airliners flying over Tibet is clean air turbulence. This type of turbulence can't be seen or predicted in advance by pilots. It is caused by eddies of air created when the airflow is disrupted by the great mountains in areas that have strong perpendicular winds and where temperature inversions are common. When flown through, clear air turbulence can be very destructive to an aircraft. According to the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration, clear air turbulence is the leading cause of injuries to passengers and flight attendants.